Hi, in a video on my EV Blog 2 channel, which I'll link in uh, just about the background of the bench and everything here, I had a non sequitur about my aircon unit on the wall here, and I'm going to have to actually move this because now it's actually really difficult to reach over my 900 millimeter long bench, and it's even further out from the wall. So, like a meter out, I've got to like reach over a meter to turn my aircon off and on all the time, but one of the problems with this damn thing is that I slowly, over the last couple of years, like I swear when I moved in like a decade ago, this thing used to work. You press the on off button, it just worked. And that's how it worked in my rented lab. It had the exact same uh, controller in it. But this one is a pain in the ass. It's been pissing me off for a long time. So I'm going to finally uh, do something about it. So uh, let me show you what's actually happening here. When I press the on off button, it doesn't just turn off or on. Now, uh, I, the only thing I do here is cool down this lab. I never ever heat it up, but it never gets that cold here. In Inside, I'm in the middle of one of these big high rise, uh, you know, office uh, tower kind of things. And it'll get up to like, uh, like 25 degrees in here or something. So I'm always cooling it down, but it never drops below like 20 or 21, even in the middle of winter. It, it stays, you know, so I've never ever in a decade had to use the heating function of this. So I'm always using the cooling mode. So all I want to do is leave it on low fan speed so that, you know, you might be able to hear it in the background, but it's really hard. You'd really have to amp it up. Generally when I shoot videos, I'm turning the aircon off just so there's no little aircon noise uh, bleed. But generally I just have it continuous low, auto mode, cool, and that's it. I've got my temperature set to like 21 degrees. Like there, there, there's got a timer thing. So it's 22, it thinks it's 22 at the moment, hence why the aircon's running. And uh, that's the set temperature. So I'll leave it set at that and I just turn it on and off. That's all I want to do. It's not asking much of an aircon system, but watch this. It'll probably make a fool of me, but I, you can see it's like worn, the uh, silk screen's worn off that, but watch this, right? I pressed it, it went into heat mode. What the? This is an on off button. I swear, over the years, I've been <laughs> slowly convincing myself that it's like how hard I press the button, how long I press it, all sorts of, you know, my mind's just coming up with lots of weird convoluted explanations for what, oh, there we go, it, it turned off. That's what I want it to do, right? But I obviously, and I can turn it back on, but there you go, it goes into heat mode, it goes into cool mode, but it's still, like continuous and it, it, it just doesn't seem like it didn't turn off or on if I hold it down and then release it it'll turn off but it's not supposed I don't believe it's supposed to work like that so anyway somebody in the previous videos um, said oh they're pretty sure that these uh, the keypad on this thing with all the buttons works as a uh, like a ladder divider basically a resistive divider and that might explain uh, you know, it could be the contacts could be dodgy. It could be picking up noise from somewhere like who knows, you know, uh, there's uh, various things that can go wrong with like, uh, you know, high impedance ladder uh, dividers like this. So I thought we'd actually uh, take it off the wall because I want to move the damn thing anyway um, and have a tear down and then just uh, investigate possible uh, fix for this or I, if I, I might want to put it back and then I could actually design a secondary possibly if I reverse engineer it, design a secondary button, which then I could mount uh, somewhere else and wire it in parallel. I assume it's like some sort of, I assume like there's a mi little micro in there that, that communicates via RS-485, some differential thing, uh, which goes back to the controller. So I, yeah, I assume that's it. Um, I probably don't want to go to the effort to reverse engineer the RS-485 RS protocol or whatever it is and do that, but I don't know, maybe I can like bodge in some remote switch somehow or something. Anyway, let's take it off the wall, do a tear down. Oh, I can't bloody well turn it off. Oh, it did. I swear. I pressed it like five times before and it didn't turn. Oh, God. All right. So it's probably got some bracket thing and it's probably painted onto the wall <laughs> when I had this place painted when I rented it out. So usually you've got to break the seal around the paint job. No, it's not going to come off without a fight. I'll get back to you. Oh, totally forgot to show. Uh, yeah, it does have a brand on it. It's an Esam. Uh, brand, but I believe the aircon I've got like is an Actron, but doll, it turns out that's a Leesum. That's an L with like air coming out of it. Get it? Leesum? Anyway, 
um, Australian thing, and yeah, I found a manual for it, so yeah, but that doesn't help me get the damn thing off the wall. I was able to get the, there's a bottom, uh, like, stick-on decal thing which hides the uh, zone buttons there. I don't have multiple zones, but I, I still cannot get this damn thing off the wall. I know there's clips, there seems to be clips on the bottom, but hang on, I think I got the bastard. Heard a crack. It's, I don't know if that was an injury from it or not, but uh, it's off bloody clips on the bottom. OEM Electronics Proprietary Limited, Sydney, Australia. You can see all the hacks I had at it. <laughs> that's like, oh, that's crude as. Anyway, decent amount of cable. Ta-da! So I'll disconnect that and bring it down to the bench. First of all, I'd better document what's connected to where, because all but the black one is damn white. So, yeah, I'll put some markers on those. First of all, let's measure the voltage on this thing. Oh, one-handed technique, 70 and a half volts. Wow, that's, that is surprising. All right, so here it is, the Leesum controls. That's, I guess, the part number, is it? Interesting to find dip switch uh, controls on here. This is inter interesting. Uh, like, integral uh, SNS, which would be sensor one here, um, which was actually connected. So I do actually, there is a sensor elsewhere in the uh, room, but I've never actually checked at all if that actually works or whether or not it uses the internal sensor in here. I don't know, it regulates the temperature uh, fairly well. Within uh, plus minus half a degree, by the way, I've done uh, temperature login plots of this thing and it gives, you know, a sawtooth plus minus, you know, like half a degree. I think we want no zones, so I don't know why zones are set. I'm pretty sure I've only got the one zone here. But anyway, it is set to uh, remote sense, so I don't know why the sense one line is connected. That's interesting. I'd probably rather have the integral sense, so I might experiment with that. Heat pump or cool um, elect. I don't know what that is, but uh, yeah, we basically want cool elect. Um, what is this? Does this thing even heat up at all? I, I don't know. Uh, continuous fan or auto continuous fan. Definitely don't want continuous fan, so that's right. Um, uh, three speed fan. It does have. It does seem to have uh, three speeds because it goes through it on the display and it does seem to move a larger volume of air with a different speed. So there you go. Anyway, yeah, as I said, I was wrong about the um, uh, differential pair, RS485. We've got common power, which as you saw, 17 and a half volts, so there's probably just like a, a 12 volt linear reg on here or something and then there'll be a 5 volt uh, linear reg for the micro because you know, these things don't take much power, so you don't need any of that switchy regulator rubbish um, and the aux line is obviously what's sending the back so, or is it a uh, just a resistor ladder line from the power, as the YouTube commenter suggested, but anyway, I've got some kind of cutouts in here for these electrolytic caps, and a big uh, whopping power resistor up there, that's because well, they just couldn't fit in, because the part of the case, yeah, it's curved down there, so I, you know, to get the nice curvy look, they've had to uh, cut away the PCB and then um, yeah, none of that surface mount rubbish. So it's you know it's clearly an old design. You know it probably dates from like the 80s or something. Anyway, let's get this PCB out. It just seems to. Oh no, there's two screws there. Oh, there we go. Got it. That's rather neat. I like that. Uh, exposed pad fingers there. They've got the uh, solder coat finish. Let's flip it over, and they just got the nuts. Oh, I've got to keep those square. Oh no, they'd actually. Uh, that's what the moldings for. It's pretty much what I expected, a micro, a few miscellaneous uh, bits and bobs, and it's, it looks like uh, that a rechargeable battery down there, because you wouldn't have a fixed uh, lithium in something like this, would you? I don't know, it could last forever. Anyway, that's for the uh, real-time clock, because this thing does have a timer, and you can see right up there. Geez, that's a weird layout, isn't it? I mean, you know, you've got your real-time clock chip, there's your 32.768 kilohertz crystal, and uh, and your battery's all the way down there. So yeah, that wasn't good uh, planning on your PCB layout uh, point of view. There you go, that's a bit of a surprise. We've got ourselves an ST Micro in here, you know, would have maybe expected an old school pick or, you know, like a Motorola part or something like that, but an ST72C334, uh, part of that uh, series. So here's the data sheet for that, but uh, yeah, it's just a general purpose 8 bit uh, micro design for near. Uh, yeah, that's uh, well and truly obsolete. You can't really uh, get that from any uh, mainstream suppliers now. You'd have to beg, borrow, steal one of those from the uh, grey market. 
if you wanted to uh, replace them. So, you know, they probably bought up uh, all the stock they could. You know, you buy like 10,000 of them. That'll do you for the next uh, 20 years or whatever. But, yeah, anyway, and it's just an 8-bit uh, micro. And looks like we have some, uh, we've got some lead drivers here. What are they? Oh, they're ULN2003 uh, uh, transistor arrays, old school. So uh, you uh, no doubt saw on the video, you probably would have seen the multiplexing of the uh, LEDs. So they're, um, they're doing all of the visual, uh, like the indicator LEDs plus the uh, seven segment displays are all part of the same uh, big ass matrix there. Switches, this micro, uh, like this is obviously a switch array. So it's all going into the micro. Well, I don't, well, I don't actually, until I trace it out, I don't know for sure, but I might trace out the sense line down to branches off there. Thank you very much. Uh, but it goes down here, it goes down here. Aha! Sense. There you go. That's the, uh, that's a thermistor. There's your temperature sensor. So yeah, like I suspect that the micro on here is not doing anything. It's just an interface to, uh, you know, switches and the LED display and everything to tell the aircon controller, which will be up in my roof here. That'll be the Actron Airtron aircon uh, controller. Yeah, so it might say, oh, remote sense, but the remote sense might actually be on here. So I don't think that the micro is actually sensing the temperature. Well, no, it does branch off, doesn't it? Maybe it does. Oh, God, it goes under a switch there. Oh, those two chippies down in there, which it seems to go down to. That one looks like it's a little uh, ST op amp. And uh, this one is a Uclassic uh, 393 dual comparator. So... Um, yeah, it looks like maybe it does go down to there somewhere, so maybe. And as I suspected, that's a linear 5 volt regulator, but that's what the resistor's there for. It's just a dropper. It's just a dropper. That's it from the 17.5 volt rail. <laughs> Old school. Now that switch in rubbish. And what's that? Is that another 5 volt reg? One for digital, one for the analog matrix, maybe? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, first thing is the uh, switches. I thought like that might might have been like a rubber membrane type thing, but it's not. That's a genuine tactile. So really, I wouldn't expect that to wear out. It's not like this has had like a million operations or anything. I do have a genuine fault in that, like an intermittent contact in that tactile switch be I was hoping that it would be that and that it would uh, you know I might be able to like you know, re-silver the bottom of the contacts or uh, something like that on the rubber baby buggy bumper membrane but no it's a that's a, a real tactile switch it still seems to have its tactile feel so I, I, I'll measure that though I will actually get the meter on there and make sure it just goes zero and it's not just dodgy ohms Okay, we've got 14.2K there. That does indicate that uh, it could be the resistor ladder, but let's just... Oh, oh, I'm pressing that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit... That switch, yeah, that's that's dodgy, brothers. Three ohms, one ohm. Oh, when I move, I'm rotating that, pivoting that side to side. Oh, yeah, that switch is dodgy. It's dodgy as. Wow, a tactile switch, 96 ohms, 75 ohms for a tactile switch. Ah, oh, who would have thought? There you go. That's a repair right there. We know we're not chicken dinner, I think. It's like a joystick. <laughs> We've invented a joystick. Um, yeah, the world's, uh, yeah, the Clayton's joystick. Wow. That right there is complete dodgy brothers. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I have. Well, maybe I might have to look through my old boards. This is why you keep, like, scrap boards and stuff. Maybe I might find something similar, because the shaft length is going to matter, um, because it's got to come through the button like this, and then it's got to push onto that. So it's not like I have a stock of tactile buttons. I have to look through old projects and stuff like that. Hmm. And therein lies the... Uh, the, the dilemma, do you store your parts based on project, which I do a lot of the time? Well, I've probably got half-half. Half my stuff, had, uh, you know, switches like this, I would have like a project box containing just parts for a specific project that I was working on, you know, because if you want to pick up the project again, then all the parts are there, all your stuff, all your boards, all your development, whatever, for it uh, is all there in, in that one box, ready to go, ready to get back into it. If you don't ever want to work on those projects anymore, you can say, well, it's you're better off uh, putting those into like a generic component bin, 
um, labeled SMD switches. But you know, how often do I need a, to get an SMD switch? <laughs> Not very often. All right, so what I've done now is uh, hooked up the probes to the common terminal and ground. It's supposed to go to, there you go. Well, let's try another button. 13.1, 13.3, 13.6, 13.7, 13.8, 13.9, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.80, 13.81, 13.82, 13.83, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, 13.87, 13.88, 13.89, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35, 13.36, 13.37, 13.38, 13.39, 13.40, 13.41, 13.42, 13.43, 13.44, 13.45, 13.46, 13.47, 13.48, 13.49, 13.50, 13.51, 13.52, 13.53, 13.54, 13.55, 13.56, 13.57, 13.58, 13.59, 13.60, 13.61, 13.62, 13.63, 13.64, 13.65, 13.66, 13.67, 13.68, 13.69, 13.70, 13.71, 13.72, 13.73, 13.74, 13.75, 13.76, 13.77, 13.78, 13.79, 13.90, 13.91, 13.92, 13.93, 13.94, 13.95, 13.96, 13.97, 13.98, 13.99, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.
Yeah, there we go. And I double checked uh, that with my BM235 and sure enough, yep, it's zero point, you know, this one has an extra uh, digit. This is the new BM786, uh, hopefully to be sale available very shortly, 0.04, but maybe there's like a little bit of residual voltage on there due to like the <laughs> ground going from the aircon unit uh, through to the uh, scope here and that's maybe just causing it to offset a little bit. That's sort of to be expected when you start introducing uh, and even very minute voltages into a, um, a pretty precision measurement thing like the ohms range on a multimeter screen. So we could hook our scope probe straight up. Oh, that's a bit of a bummer because I wanted to use um, the new Mixig DP1007. And this is a new model which uh, they designed at my request because I wanted a times 10 times 100 one. They've got others in this uh, DP10,000 uh, series that have uh, different divider ratios, but I wanted one to match my HVP70 probe, a potentially lower cost option uh, for that. They have, I've got to fully test this one, but everyone says, you know, it's a pretty decent performer and uh, it's lower cost than the HVP 70. So I might eventually carry this on the EV blog store. That's the plan. But yeah, um, they specifically made this to my uh, request, like took them like six or nine months and they eventually um, said, yep, we can do a times 10 times 100 design. So you should see the uh, specs of this match almost precisely the HVP 70, except it's, it's a little bit wider bandwidth, but otherwise very similar specs all around. Anyway, I'm probing the ox line there, and aha, uh -huh, if we single shot capture that, look at that. So that's, you know, it's got some ripply doodah on there, and periodically, is that going to be a 50 hertz thing? Oh no, 515 hertz. There you go. That's interesting. Like, it's doing some sort of periodic scanning or something like that, perhaps. I can't get a consistent trigger on that, so, aha, uh -huh, at a long... Ah, it's packet-based. There you go. It's packet-based. Trap for young... When... Uh, basically, if you see an otherwise periodic... You know, if you zoomed in like this, if you see, like, what, what you think, you know, you do single-shot capture like that, and this looks periodic. If you zoom out like this, this is just a how-to-use-a-scope thing, and it appears periodic like that, but you've got your trigger level set, to where you think it should trigger from. And if you actually put your scope into run mode and it doesn't trigger like that at the trigger level you thought it does, either above or below like that, then obviously it's got it's not completely periodic. So then you know to zoom out and aha, uh -huh, of course, it's a packet-based thing at, there you go, 2.7 odd hertz, something like that. And there's a, oh, there's a packet on there, whether or not it's like an actual packet, whether it's supposed to do that, or whether or not that's just, I don't know, some noise pick up on the line. I like have no idea. The aircon's not actually working at the moment. So anyway, let me switch it on and see if you can see a difference. Okay, here we go, big power button. Oh, do you see anything in that? Let me press it again. It's gone on. Oh, that's not analog level, it's... So yeah, it, it seems to be doing some packety based thing there. I like, yeah, I don't, you know, it's kind of not what you expect, is it? I don't know if anyone's got any details about this, you know, if you're into this uh, aircon uh, control, aircon market, aircon controllers and stuff like that. So the YouTube commenter asked Stephen G, um, I'm not sure where he's getting his voltages uh, from, but you know, here's his uh, post where he says, yeah, like the voltages uh, when you press the buttons. And that uh, makes sense from a point of view of that uh, it was possibly confusing my on off button because it's down, it's supposed to be like zero volts. But where's he actually measuring that from? I don't know, I'd have to do more. It's, it's certainly not on the aux line, that's for sure, because this is the ox line here, so yeah, mm. but it does make sense in that uh, it could be confusing the on off button with a, because it's, you know, you saw the dodgy resistance there, um, causing a problem, a conflict with the next one up the threshold level, which was the uh, heat cool thing. So that's why it was sort of like jumping into heat or cool mode randomly when I tried to turn it off or on. So that makes sense. Okay, so the way we can trigger on this is our pet looks like every uh, 500 milliseconds and so I'm going to change my told off time here to, oh, oh it's all over the shop. Oh, geez, that's, a, that's jumping around. Oh, anyway, 
let's set it to like, you know, I don't know, 400 milliseconds or something like that. There you go. We should be able to trigger off that fairly reliably. Where's my trigger point? Yep. There you go. So I'm sure I've done videos on this. So what happens is after the trigger, it waits another 400 milliseconds before it arms the triggering system again. So that, yeah, it'll arm within that dead period. It'll uh, rearm about there, something like that. And then it'll capture the next packet. So that's how we can reliably trigger on that. So there you go. Okay, now watch that. I am going to turn the on off button. Oh, oh, has that changed? Oh, wee, hello. Press it again. No, so it's changing. <laughs> it's certainly changing. You can see. Is it back on? Oh god, I can't see it because it's back to front. Panel's back to front. Oh, okay, that's all. That's our aircon on. That's aircon completely off. So that's completely off. So we've got all pulses there. So aircon, and now it's on auto cooling. So what I'm going to guess here is that maybe it, pre it just continuously sends out the last button that was pressed, perhaps? And then the different combinations are what you see here? I, I don't know. Leave it in the comments down below if you've got a better idea of what's going on here. But that, that seems to be the case, because this is just repeating, repeating. I'm not touching these buttons. This is just like this code just changes and stays changed every time you press a button. So let me go off again, and hopefully we'll get all of them back again. Okay, yep, it's off, and yep, we get all of them back. So that seems consistent. So I think we're on to something there. So it seems to be just transmitting, yeah, it, over and over again, the last key that was pressed, and then the controller that it's going to, the aircon controller, knows, well, you know, I'm not going to do that again because you've already pressed that button. But, oh, okay... Right, no, so the micro, right, because the on-off button is the same for both on and off, so it needs to know that you've pressed it again. So when you turn it on, it switches to another mode. So it's not outputting what key, it's outputting the last key and mode, something like that. Ugh. It's a bit how you're doing. It's not what I was uh, expecting, so it doesn't look like it'd be something easy to sort of like build another controller to do it. You'd have to spend a bit of time reverse engineering this and figure it all out. It's uh, it's certainly not that uh, voltage level uh, system that uh, Stephen on the uh, comments was uh, alluding to, but that, that might be like internal, but that's certainly pointed to the switch. So yeah, that uh, switch array, they uh, probably are using like an ADC internal to the micro to detect the switch, and that's, we're just getting that dodgy switch. So anyway, I think that's enough dicking around with uh, the waveforms there. I think I'll just uh, go in there and um, see if I can find a replacement switch and then just get this back up and running at the very least. And if we power it from an external uh, lab supply here, it does actually, well, it powers up but it just um, ends up flashing, does a little power on cycle, and then flashes a uh, zone one here. So, and of course, the uh, the power button does absolutely nothing, um, as you'd expect, because it's got nothing to do with the power of this uh, unit. It's designed to talk with the uh, with the main controller. So, um, unfortunately, I've uh, I've probed the aux line here, and we just get enough all. So it's not doing anything. Yeah, it's doing okay. So after it's power on sequence, it uh, yeah, it's up, oh, but it's well, no, it's periodically doing something, is it? I need to trigger off that. No, I can't uh, trigger off anything there really, um, on the positive side or on the uh, lower side either. So getting diddly squat. So it's not, it's not doing anything. Yeah, is that uh, can signal being actually uh, provided? by, well, must be uh, provided by the controller, I would assume. And then the LM339 that we saw on here, the uh, dual comparator, that's exactly what you'd need to decode this. So you just decode it at, uh, you know, two different threshold levels that turn it into a digital uh, signal, which this thing, which the micro can then uh, decode very easily. So yeah, it looks like um, this thing is just a passive slave. It doesn't do anything without the um, signal being generated uh, by the uh, master controller. So it seems to just uh, sit at mid-rail there, as you saw, and then just uh, pulses up and down. So, uh, yeah, uh, that doesn't do us anything. Completely forgot. Oh, well, not 
completely because I did eventually remember that I do actually unlabeled. Uh, I really have to label. I do have um, a, a thing full of switches. But uh, unfortunately, these are. Oh, no, hang on. Maybe, maybe I can find one. Oh, that's a bit shorty. Oh, that's super long shaft. Look at that. Oh, that one might do it. I can always uh, cut the shaft to length. And uh, yeah, it might be through hole, but uh, I can fix that. There you go, successfully chopped off and converted to surface mount. <laughs> no wackers. I trim those leads. They're a bit long, but uh, yeah, just trim the leads and we're good to go. There you go, like I bought one from brown to black. No worries, and oh, it's got a nice snappy feel to it. Okay, let's just re-verify that Dodgy Brothers resistance there. Need the old third hand. Oh yeah, 100, 190 ohms, 170 ohms. <laughs> Wow. Can I get it right down? I'm pushing really hard on that. Oh, three ohms, two ohms. Oh, yeah. Dodgy. But now, let's put in our new switch, 14.2K, press it, and zero. Thank you very much. I don't think we're going to have any more issues. That looks pretty darn repeatable to me. And give it a little wiggle, 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 yeah, down the bottom. Nah, that's all good. All right, let's see if this sucker works. Here we go. One push. Oh, nice clicky. Nice clicky. And, oh, beautiful. First go. I've got to do it a couple of times. Wear out my poor air con. Oh, it's flashing. Uh, run. I don't know why it flashes run. I, but, yep. Yep. Fixed. And there we go. Auto heat cool. Yep. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That is fixed. So it was the, like a switch. I thought maybe it might be like a membrane type thing. Turned out to be a tactile switch. Usually it's pretty rare that those tactile switches uh, fail like that. Have seen it before, but it's not something, it's not my initial conclusion that I'd uh, jump to for something like this. And as I said, if this was arranged, this was designed as a uh, switch matrix in the micro as you'd normally do it. You know, you'd have a bunch of uh, digital lines for the common, a bunch of digital lines for the uh, rows, and then you uh, multiplex them and you scan, you continuously scan the keyboard. It, it Really, it doesn't matter whether or not that switch is a couple of hundred ohms. It'd still work, and it wouldn't confuse it with other buttons on there, but that's not how they implement that. So they've implemented, obviously using some sort of resistor divider thing, I don't know, we could like reverse engineer this. If anyone actually does have a uh, reverse engineered or a schematic for this thing, uh, please leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, obviously it is what um, Stephen said in the uh, comments. They're obviously trying to do some sort of resistor dividery uh, type keypad arrangement, I, you know, and trying to read that value. So that's a dicky design decision that um, it can come back to bite me, basically. It's been bugging me for years. I can't believe I put up with it. Um, I think I did actually try to take the thing off the wall before and I just couldn't get the damn thing off. So I go, ah, bugger it, you know. And uh, so I finally, it took a lot of effort to get that off the wall. But yeah, it was like yeah, somehow painted on. It's been on there for like 15 years. It's never been taken off ever since uh, this building was built, probably, you know, 17, 18 years or something like that. And yeah, that switch finally come a guts uh, and was causing it to like put it into heating and cooling mode and doing all sorts of these weird modes. Like you'd come up with all these convoluted theories. Oh, like if I hold it on for a bit longer, if I press it twice in a row quickly, it'll do this and that. But no, it was just, <laughs> there was no method. Sometimes you might think, oh, it might repeat it a couple of times. So you might think you've found something and something else is playing up with it. No, it was just a dodgy switch contact with a, a dodgy ass implementation of a keypad matrix, uh, you know, a, or a keypad um, input design, sense design, and that was just causing different modes. That's a, that was a real interesting repair. So I'm going to call that a repair video. Actually, it was going to be like a, a maybe a reverse engineering video. But anyway, if you've got details about that uh, command system, yeah, please leave it in the comments down below. Got any other info? Please let me know. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big, well, a thumb. There it is, foreground thumb, because I'm zoomed in a lot. Give it a big a thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss in the comments down below, EV Blog Forum, alternative platforms, all that sort of stuff. You know the deal. Ring the subscribe bell and all that YouTuber stuff we say. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time. Yeah.